unity gain sampler or we can say buffer so name itself indicate that the gain is 1 so this is the circuit which is used as a buffer so input signal and output signal both are equal so unity gain buffer so this is the diagram of continuous time signal system of unity gain buffer and we implement it by using a switch capacitor circuit so we apply the input we are using MOSFET as a switch we are using a capacitor this is a unity gain sampler now we will consider the topology where we are using a three switch so to control the sampling mode and amplification mode so there are two modes of operating one is sampling mode and other is amplification mode so we are using switch S1, S2 and S3 so to control the sampling and amplification mode now in a sampling mode switch S1 and S2 is on so whenever switch S1 and S2 is on so this is a sampling mode so this is, see this this is the equivalent circuit in a sampling mode so this capacitor will track the input signal in a sampling mode so it will take the sample of the input signal so it will store the voltage that is the input voltage so in a sampling mode switch S1 and S2 is on and switch S3 is off so this V out is equal to voltage at X that is equal to 0 so in a sampling mode it will take the sample and that uh, capacitor CH will track the input signal it will store that voltage on capacitor in that case sampling mode output is equal to 0 so in amplification mode the switch S1 and S2 is turn off and switch S3 is turn on in a sampling mode amplification mode S3 is turn on so this capacitor is placed around this node X and V out so this op amp will enter in a amplification mode so we have to consider the speed consideration for unity gain buffer so see this this is in a sampling mode switch S1 and S2 is turn on so we are using MOSFET we are applying a clock signal so we can draw the equivalent circuit for this So OPAM is replaced by its equivalent circuit that is a transconductance GM into VX and output resistance of the OPAM. So we can up find out a uh, speed consideration for a uh, unity gain sampler. We can apply the KVL to this equivalent circuit. We will find out the Vx by Ix. So we draw the equivalent circuit for this op-amp. R on 2 is the on resistance of switch 2 and op-amp is replaced by its equivalent circuit. R0 is the open loop output impedance of the op-amp. Now we can apply the KVL at this point that is a Vx is equal to drop across this that is Ix into R on 2 plus drop across this that is a uh, ix minus gm into vx multiplied by r0 so we apply the KVL to this circuit that is a uh, vx is equal to drop across this resistance r on 2 and drop across this r0 so voltage drop across the r0 is this current ix minus this current gm into vx so this is the current which is flowing to the resistance r0 now we can simplify this so this minus gm vx r0 will come at the left hand side so it become a plus so vx plus gm vx r0 ix we can take the common so ix is the common so remaining terms are around 2 plus r0 at the left hand side again we can take vx common so it is 1 plus gm into r0 is equal to ix around 2 plus r0 so resistance at x node that is rx is equal to vx by ix that is equal to r on 2 plus r0 divided by 1 plus gm into r0 so this is the resistance rx is equal to r0 plus r on 2 divided by 1 plus gm into r0 
now as compared to 1 this transconductance gm into r0 is greater so we can neglect the 1 so when you neglect the 1 this r0 will get cancelled with this r0 so rx is equal to 1 upon gm rx is equal to 1 upon gm so time constant in a sampling mode is equal to on resistance of this s1 and equivalent resistance at node x so sampling time is given by on resistance of switch 1 equivalent resistance at node x that is 1 upon gm multiply by ch r into ch so total resistance is r on 1 plus 1 upon gm next circuit that is non inverting amplifier so again it is working in a two mode that is a sampling mode and amplification mode so in a sampling mode input will be tracked by the capacitor and in amplification mode that input is applied to the op amp so this is the circuit of non inverting amplifier v in switch s1 switch s3 switch s2 c1 and c2 capacitors are used so in a sampling mode switch s1 <coughs> and switch s2 is on so in a sampling mode switch s1 and s2 is turned on so see this is the equivalent circuit so this switch is closed s1 and s2 s3 is open so in a sampling mode this capacitor c1 will track the input signal c1 will track this input signal in a sampling mode so in amplification mode s1 and s2 are turned off and s3 is turned on so see this is the diagram in amplification mode so this op amp act as a non inverting amplifier whenever the switch s3 is turned on and s1 and s2 is turned off so see the output this is the output for amplification mode c1 by c2 is the voltage gain this is the input applied to the non inverting amplifier S still we are applying input to the inverting terminal of the op amp the output and input signal are both on both are in a phase and that is the reason this amplifier is give, given the name that is a non inverting amplifier so c1 by c2 is the gain of this non inverting amplifier so output is equal to gain c1 by c2 multiply by input so input is vn0 switch capacitor circuit uh, integrator now uh, integrator will perform uh, integration operation on the signal so this is a continuous time signal uh, integrator circuit so basically output is a integration of input signal so v out is equal to minus 1 upon r into cf mul multiply by integration of input signal v in now we will find out the resistance equivalent for a discrete time signal system so we draw the equivalent circuit va is a voltage at node a vb is a voltage at node b and this is the resistance which is at the input side so we write the current equation for this so i is the current flowing through the resistance r so that is equal to voltage at a minus voltage at b divided by r so this is one equation now we will find out the discrete time resistor so we can use switch s1 and s2 so va a node we are using switch s1 and at node b we are using switch s2 now this uh, capacitor will alternately connect at node a and node b at a clock rate that is a clock frequency so average current flowing through from node A to node B is equal to the charges move in a one clock cycle. So average current we can write the equation is equal to this Cs multiply by voltage at A minus voltage at B divided by clock signal frequency inverse. So average current flowing from node A to node B is equal to Cs this is the capacitor a clock frequency that is a frequency multiply by voltage at a minus voltage at b 
so when you compare this equation a with the equation b when you compare this the r is equal to the resistance in a continuous time signal is equal to uh, cs that is a capacitor and clock frequency inverse so we find the equation for resistor so now discrete time integrator we can implement by using a switch s1 and s2 and uh, we are using capacitor c1 and c2 so this is the output signal for the integrator so c1 by c2 is the voltage gain so every clock cycle c1 will absorb the charge that is equal to v in multiply by c1 when switch s1 is turn on now whenever switch s1 is turn on it is in a sampling mode so c1 will track the input signal so c1 will absorb the charges that is equal to v in multiply by c1 and it will deposit that charges on c2 when this s2 is turn on so if v in is a constant value the output will be changed by c1 by c2 multiply by input so if you apply the constant value here the output value will be changed by c1 by c2 so there are two drawbacks of this uh, integrator that is a charge injection of s1 depends upon the input signal so which will introduce a non linearity in a charge stored on the c1 so it will affect on the output so non linear capacitance at node p again it will create a problem so it will lead a non linear charge to voltage conversion when switch s uh, when s1 is switched to the node x so this c1 will switch to the node x it will lead to the non linear charge to voltage conversion to solve the these two drawbacks we are uh, going to modify the circuit so this is the parasitic insensitive integrator so we are adding one more two more switches that is uh, s3 and s4 so in a sampling mode so this switch s1 and s3 is turn on so see this is a sampling mode s1 and s3 is turn on so this c1 will track the input signal so input signal is stored on a capacitor c1 so in a integration mode switch s2 and s4 will turn on so see this is the equivalent circuit switch s2 and s4 is turn on so this is a integration mode so in a sampling mode s1 and s2 s3 these two switches is turn on and switch s2 and s4 is turn off which will allow the voltage across c1 will track the input signal and the c2 will hold the previous value so in a integration mode the switch s3 will turn off first it will injecting a constant charges on this c1 so in a ampli integration mode the switch s3 will turn off first it will inject the charges on c1 then switch s1 will turn off so after that switch s3 s2 and s4 will turn on so charge stored on c1 will transfer to the c2 and that will perform the integration operation now since the switch s3 will turn off first it will introduce a constant offset voltage which can be suppressed by a differential operation left plate of the c1 is a uh, uh, driven by charge injection of s1 and s2 which will contribute no error now see this switch s1 uh, c1 so this left plate charge injected by s1 will be absorbed by s2 so there is a no error in this case the node x this node x uh, over to the ground charge injected by or absorbed by s4 is a constant that is not dependent on supply voltage v in so at this point the charge injected and absorbed by the switch s1 is not dependent on this input voltage 